Hi folks, welcome to a shop update video. So much to talk about what's been going on, what we're doing now, and what's coming. So I'm sitting here in front of our Haas VM3. We finally uh, took a year, which is a bummer, because uh, we've been busy, and that's a great thing, but it took a year. Um, we mounted our Trunnion. And so card here to our video, where we ran our first fifth axis part simultaneous using Fusion 360. It is awesome, it is so cool. Uh, we just took the vise off because I got to flip the jaws around. Uh, we did some three plus two parts, which were great. And we now need to use this for some work we've got to do. Um, so I got to flip these around. Uh, here we were experimenting with trying to get a good Swarf toolpath. It is tricky. Uh, there's a lot more to five axis cam than, than you know, any sort of three uh, axis surfacing. So we're going to do some fusion videos and talk more about what we've been doing on that and learning. Um, but the three plus two stuff is super easy and just phenomenal. They joke that it makes you a lazy machinist because you just don't have to do the same amount of work. And uh, a lot of times it's still two ops, but that second op is, is really a low risk op because you've done all your specific geometry there. Uh, we've got some new tools in that we want to test. A giant shear hog, a corolloy uh, aluminum ripper, their Pro X mill which is a super good value. It's like 210 bucks for the tool and a bunch of inserts. So really excited to see that rip through aluminum. Speaking of aluminum, we've been running the Imperializers, which has been super fun. There's the raw material. We, we basically don't buy full length material anymore. It is so much more efficient to have the mill uh, or the vendor cut it for us. Uh, so one of the things I wanna talk about a lot too is the NYC CNC website. That was my big thing for last year from the mechanics side of it. I spent a huge amount of time building out the infrastructure of that site and now it's time to put the content out on it. So one of the things I want to talk about and we'll either put a card here or a link in the description is how to buy raw material. Sounds super simple but we've learned so many lessons about what, how to request the material, where it's from, whether or not to request a certification, what are your saw cut tolerances, what is reasonable when you demand or request certain conditions uh, with, the, with the aluminum, the extrusion, how it's handled, how it's packaged, when it's delivered, like so many little things that make life easier that are super fun. Uh, so again, more to come on that. I think I've got an article up already and so that comes literally right up to the machine and this is op one here so we're using the pearson systems with talon grips here and then pit bulls there so that gives us a pretty low profile holding it and we're ripping on this we're gonna um we'll talk more about it here in a second uh, and then they get flipped over to just this uh, riser bar with a pin and then these are car lane, they're called tiny vices. We love these. You could use uniforces as well, but I, I happen to like these for a lot of reasons. Uh, and that does the op two. And then this is a, an aluminum version, it will not get anodized or assembled. So it goes out with the engraving on it. The cycle time isn't as fast as I'd like, but we're working on it and it's been very reliable, which is what I also like. And so that's what I love about this product is it's a very much a real product. I use it, I love it. It's been hilarious to see the people that don't get it, uh, that have been very vocal about it, calculators or iPhones. I don't wanna use my iPhone. The beauty of the Imperializer is I can stick it up on the machine. We'll go look at, uh, where we've been putting them together at. And it's super fun to have this dedicated hardware device that does one specific thing. And, and it's cool that we can do it. Um, so we've got a prototype here with the old white keyboard, but here's an assembled one and you can stick it up there. You can stick it on your desk. Um, oops, you know, kind of do whatever you want with it. That's what I love. The other thing I love about it is it's not something that we take so seriously uh, that we, we're going to share everything on it. So look for here in the coming months, some videos on everything, how we thought about it, how we went through the design phase, the CAD, uh, the CAM, the prototypes. We 3D printed some cases. We outsourced uh, the circuit boards, uh, how we send them to anodizing, how we machine them, how we fixture them, uh, the mistakes that we've already made. It's just super fun because it's a project where we can do all that with. Um, and I think, don't, uh, I'm not 100% sure, um, but I think I'm probably just going to go ahead and share all of the business side of revenue too. How many have we sold? Why have we made certain decisions? Some people have really asked for different versions of it, which we haven't done to date. We might still do them, but there was a very deliberate thought process that went into that. Um, and how do you go from there? How do we package them up? It's, it's really fun. Um, we've been working a lot on our inventory system. Um, for folks that don't know, uh, for the last sort of year or so, John Grimsmo and I do a podcast every Friday morning called The Business of Machining. It started as a conversation that John and I used to have um, on Friday mornings, very raw, very, I hate to use the word intimate, but you know, kind of a, hey, like, 
share the highs, but hey, what are the lows? What are we struggling with? Uh, what is it like? Everyone wants to be an entrepreneur, or many people want to be entrepreneurs. Let's talk about what it really is like. And um, some time ago, Rob Lockwood said, you should turn that into a podcast, which was crazy because it was kind of a private conversation. Uh, and so we did that, and it's been awesome. And so uh, one of the things I also wanted to share on this, chip, on this um, shop update was kind of the combination of the business of machining uh, as a good podcast for folks that are into podcasts or want to hear more about entrepreneurship, manufacturing entrepreneurship, uh, machining, you know, starting a business, that kind of thing. But also, uh, I loved the chip break series and those kind of went away. They didn't go away because I stopped them. They went away because I realized doing just you know random chip break videos intermittently here and there didn't make sense because there was no progression or flow to it. Um, or rather, I, I knew there's a better way to do that and that's what made me think or realize we need to tie those into the NYC CNC website. So, so sorry, we didn't have many of them uh, sort of in the second half of this year, but it's worth it because now what we're gonna be able to do is film these videos and be much more enriching, much more uh, good content, and we can share them in a way that's gonna be easy for you guys to find them, watch them, consume them, and go find them again later. Uh, I love YouTube. YouTube has been great for us, but it also has limitations. It's hard for even us to find our own videos from time, you know, from yesteryear. And there's no really good, uh, the search is just difficult. Um, and, and it's very difficult on YouTube to deliver more content, you know, PDFs or Excel files or other content, or simply to update it. You know, uh, we're gonna put a video out on insurance or shipping or something else. And if I wanna then update that video, uh, being able to replace the video on the same NYC CNC webpage means when you go back to that page, you will find the latest version. And that to me is really important. So that's been our big thing, which, is, which has been super exciting. Um, Tormach machines are banging away as usual. We just finished a training class on them. Uh, this is actually a great example of, of how we use them. Uh, we've machined the soft jaws on the 1100s, some of the other fixtures for this, and then right now we're running op three on the 770s. So they come, there's op one and two, and then the side work is relatively quick, but I, I don't want to tie up the haws with it, and this works uh, very well for us. I'm sure I mentioned this before, but um, these egg crates, uh, link in the video description, we buy them on Amazon, they're cheap, there may be even a cheaper way to get them. So good for pulling off small parts and keeping them in order. That way, if you make a mistake, or rather when you make a mistake, you know how to go back through the order, and it's a much easier way to count quantities. Again, more raw material coming in. Uh, that is all for mini pallets uh, that, we, that we make and sell. So again, we buy a uh, saw cut, goes right over to the machine. Uh, this stuff is for new products, so look for that stuff soon. Uh, I don't buy that much full-length raw material, but we do keep some of it on hand, so that's what that's for. I know we've been, it's been a while since we did a shop tour, so one of the things I've also been super excited about is we, we've really improved our packaging. So we've got um, the Saunders tape now, we've got a much better system, and that is, that is cool, that feels really good. Our Wednesday widget just came out. Uh, actually, I don't know if it's out yet, it depends on when we release this, but the iPad automated hype machine. We also have started a TIG training program. It's actually not really our thing, it's more uh, being hosted by Jonathan Lewis of Superior Welding um, and also sometimes Roy Crumrine from Crummy Welding. Those guys are not only great TIG welders, they're really good uh, teachers. So we've got this little station set up here and the class has been going really well. If you're interested, uh, we'll put a card here to the little video we did. Uh, we never released it, so it's, it's still an uh, unlisted video um, showing off that class. But if you're interested in learning TIG welding or improving your skills or getting a chance to try, you know, we've got Miller's, Lincoln's, Everlast machines here. That's been great. This is how we've been shipping our pallets, uh, the aluminum ones at least, to uh, anodizing. We built some crates to do better QC as well as quantities and making sure they get handled reliably and safely. So this is very much a work in progress, but this is something what, what, what we're trying to do where we've got hanging cards that make it easy to identify what's where. Um, each rack itself is specific to a product or subset like that. And we've got pictures that match the website description or make it easy to understand how to assemble it. Um, green tape shows that it's a ready to ship component. So that may mean it's a sub, sub, sub assembly component. So this may go as, into part of something else, but nevertheless, that's the point is that, you know, these are not green tape. So these become assembled into that. Trying to do Kanban cards with re reorder points. Uh, again, that's something that we learned from Jay Pearson and uh, I'm proud of this. I also know there's a lot of things that we need to improve and that's, this, that's how it works. That's part of the process. So uh, that's been great. 
we have been doing all of the US manufacturing for ClickSpring. Actually, sorry, we handle the manufacturing. Uh, we are not actually machining these at the moment. We have them machined for us, but it's been a great partnership uh, for his fire pistons. Sorry, they don't look uh, as good in there inside the packaging here. But if you're interested in one of those, especially for a Christmas gift, um, ClickSpring, Chris is a great guy and uh, he lives in Australia and he wanted a way to source these and ship them out of the US. So we have taken over that for about a year now and it's gone, it's gone very well. It's a really cool uh, product and if you don't know what a fire piston is, um, we'll put a link in the video description to see his video on that. Judd, say hi. Oh, that's what I wanted to show you guys on the Tormach. We, uh, we've got a thread mill in there right now because it's always bothered me how hard it is to get thread mills working the right way. So we have a new intern, Alex, who has been working on all of the math behind a thread mill. It ends up, there's a lot to it that's a lot easier than I realized. And it has to do with the fact that a lot of single point thread mills are meant to cut finer pitches than you may be cutting. And I won't ramble about it now, um, but we wanted to put together a single tutorial with an Excel file and Fusion file that shows you how to do it, period. And I didn't want to reference internet sites and other things. I wanted to go straight back to the machinery's handbook because that is, you know, the buck stops there. So I'm excited to get that video out. We've been working on it. And lastly, we're trying a new training class. So link in the video description, but in February, we're going to do a two day fixturing class. We're gonna call this an advanced class. So you need to be comfortable with machining and Fusion 360 and setting up tools and all that. But we're gonna have a various uh, uh, projects or parts, and then a very a variety of fixtures, clamps, mighty bites, you know, talons, uh, car lanes, all that different stuff. And we're going to do a two hands-on, two-day hands-on class where you're going to come and you're going to pick which project you want to work on and fixture it. It'll be multi-op. It'll be challenging. Uh, and we'll be here to help you and, and guide you through it. But really excited for that. So if you're interested, again, a link in the video description. Otherwise, folks, thanks for watching. Um, you know, my focus on 2018 is going to be putting content out on. YouTube, but also the NYC CNC website. You know, Haas was here the other day helping train us on this trunnion, and we learned so much. So putting a video out on how we set up that trunnion, how we run it, how we get Fusion Tool Pass, but then also we learned so many good little nuggets about um, the tool library and the Haas and probing routines, and I want to share that with you guys. And again, that's a great example of where I'm excited to do that now on the NYC CNC website for two reasons. One, it's a great place to kind of store that stuff and it's easy for you guys to find because of that library that we've got. It's got smart tags so you can go through and sort through and search through to get the information. Um, it's gonna let us store the additional information we need like the PDFs and the references and the content. And if we wanna update something, if we learn, we improve it, we can make sure that information stays up to date. So again, folks, thanks for watching. Have a great holiday season. Take care. See you soon. Good boy. You say hi. Good boy. Yeah. All right. Take care, folks.